In case I'm supposed to, I'm saying something now.
Good evening and welcome everyone and uh, welcome, welcome to York Observatory's Teletube, the online astronomy and astrophysics program written and presented by the students, faculty, alumni and friends of York University. We are broadcasting live this evening from the Allen I. Carswell Observatory located at York University in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. This Teletube broadcasts every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. local Toronto time. For any questions or comments we have about past shows or if you have suggestions for future topics please send us an email at observe at yorku.ca you can also connect with us on twitter or instagram with the handle at york observatory and facebook at Alan I carswell obs i'm dr hyde and i'll be one of your many many hosts this evening um, and we also have i just like to call out a telescope operator lore and uh, uh lore and connor who are over on the the one meter telescope at the moment. Okay, now just getting ourselves started here tonight, we have a very special astronomy event. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, get started. We have the astronomy event in 4D, or as we're calling it, the Director Delaney Disengagement Derby. Now, as I mentioned before, we're just getting started here. We have a host of people with us tonight. Uh, of course, we also have Observatory Director Paul Delaney. Um, now, Paul Delaney has been Observatory Director for some time, and I'd just like to, you know, give a start to the celebration here, if we will. And it's true that he is Director Delaney, but pretty soon I'll be Director Hyde. So I'd like to direct your attention to astronomy uh, directly. But you know, this astronomy event will cover the directorship of Professor Paul Delaney. So we're joined by a veritable constellation of stars in this broadcast. We have with us, just calling out live here tonight, Professor Paul Delaney, would you like to come in and say hi? Certainly would. Had to find my hat, brushed it off for the occasion. <laughs> Delighted to be here, Elena. Excellent. And we'll be hearing from you throughout this evening. Now we also have with us um, many, many other folks. I'm just going to do a little bit of a in, in Zoom roll call, if you will. I have Michael DeRobertis, who's here. We have Noah Prosser, who's come in. Uh, we'll hear from her later. Patrick Hall, we have Ralph Chu, Sarah Mazurai, Tom Luton, and we have Matthias. Uh, we have, I'm sorry, Matt, I should say, <laughs> from the observatory. We have, oh, Marshall McCall, can't forget, he actually managed to get in the Zoom. We have Maheen and Lauren Connor at the telescope. We have Julie and Jesse uh, and June, and that I think rounds off the Jays. We also have Sana, Arfa, Amin, and the, uh, the Milky Way computer itself, which is hooked into the one meter telescope. <laughs> So we are at a huge capacity here tonight on Zoom, um, and we have a large amount of things to, to get to. So I thought, since this is an astronomy celebration, what better way to start than actually to start with a little bit of what's up in the sky, which is actually how we always start our shows. Um, and I think I'll go ahead and uh, and see if we can get that live connection for you, uh, Paul. Um, now, Connor and Lore, can you pipe us through to the one meter telescope, please? And it should be, oh, I think we're just a smidge early. Here we go. The one meter telescope should be coming through it is any minute now. Venus front and center. And we were going to, we couldn't fool you for a minute. You knew right what we were looking at. <laughs> <laughs> it's about the only thing that's going to be visible in the bright uh, pre-sunset sky here at uh, you know, York. Excellent. Excellent. So as you mentioned, Venus is up. Um, it's actually next to Mars at the moment, um, which is a little bit too dim uh, with the sun still out. That pesky late night sunset. It's um, getting better, but the nights are getting longer, which I'm sure I'm the only person or one of the few in Toronto who was happy about that because, of course, it's high summer. But it means that we can all start observing earlier and earlier. 
Indeed, and it is worth noting that if you're out stargazing tonight, uh, watch out for the clouds. It is a chance of thunderstorming at 10, but if you have clear weather, you're can actually catch Mars and Venus following the sun down this evening. And if you decide to stay up late and don't get the predicted thunderstorms, by about 11 p.m. to midnight, Jupiter and Saturn will also be rising towards the east. Um, and of course, you know, as we're getting started off here, we just like to call off, uh, we are going to be talking a little bit about a small amount of the things you've you've done over the years, Paul, and uh, um, and thanks to our observatory member oh, June sure. for researching this earlier. Um, but we actually had uh, a little bit of a, a history. It's you started at the observatory in 19. 86 and now it is 2021 so that's actually 34 years and 10 months <laughs> if you get to september 2 it'll be 35 years so you're absolutely <laughs> right i walked onto campus september 2 of 1986 uh, into the 30 centimeter observatory that was the smallest telescope we had at that point and of course the 60 centimeter telescope so i'm rounding that to 35 years order of magnitude sure you know but yeah 35 years and uh, julie um who is also here has just sneak uh, sneakily put into chat that she was seven years old at that time so <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's probably several of the students act who are actually here tonight who weren't even around at that point in time so yes uh, that's it's a long stretch it really is but it's been a wonderful stretch and so many wonderful students throughout that 35 years and of course all of my colleagues of whom we will hear from uh, later on Exactly. And um, we uh, go ahead and say, you know, of course, you've had a lot of other fun things that you did before this. So I'd just like to say call out for um, support astronomy, because actually, this is one of my favorite things as well. You were actually a support astronomer at the McGraw Hill Observatory, um, and a reactor physicist. Um, and then before that, you did your MSc at the University of Victoria, um, and a BSc over in ANU in Canberra, Australia. Correct, indeed. Absolutely. Yeah, the, the ANU sort of more or less the Australian National University at the foot of Mount Stromlo. That was uh, a nice stomping ground there. Uh, but um, to move on for my bachelor's degree, I came to Canada. The plan was to do a master's degree at UVic uh, for two years. That was in 1978. Stepped off the boat, uh, well, the plane actually, and then a ferry, but it was a boat. Uh, September 2 of 1978. The plan was two years. Yeah, I haven't quite got back home yet. So what, what can I say? Well, I, you know, the, the, the donuts in Canada are very good. <laughs> the coffee's not bad. Um, but yes, I... Uh, <laughs> Uh, um, all right, so getting started here, we're actually up at the observatory live right now with Connor and Lore. So thank you to both of them for showing these lovely images of Venus. Now, I don't think there's too much else that we're going to be able to see with the sun still up, but I thought what better to do than to actually have them start a little bit of a tour. So let's just see if we're, if they're, if we're able to get them to set up their tour camera. And we're actually going to try a little bit of a walk around here. So, Lore, um, please yep, flip your camera around if you can to show the, uh, the video. And um, I'm just going to see if I can make this a... Oh, that looks good. Oh, and I keep losing people. Hang on. All right. So I'm making your video spotlight. And now you should be live. Now, Milky Way computer, please stop your share if you haven't already. All right, so now we should be getting our main video coming through. This is a tour of the observatory. Uh, now, Glad we cleaned uh, up last week, Elena. <laughs> I know. So, um, <laughs> Paul, why don't you go ahead and uh, give us a little bit of a, uh, a description here? Sure. So we've entered our one meter observatory dome. It's actually an ash dome. It's around about uh, 20 feet in diameter, just a touch under seven meters. But the pride and joy here at the center, which you can see, is our one meter plane wave telescope. 
This was installed in August of 2019. So it's literally just under two years old. This is sort of the back end of the telescope. Of course, it's looking out through the sky, giving us those images of Venus that we saw. This is a dream of a telescope. Before this telescope was here, it was home to the 40 centimeter telescope. And then prior to that, to the 30 centimeter telescope. So this dome has seen a lot of telescopes over the years. As we walk through the link, which used to be a dark room, yes, we used to develop plates and film in that dark room. Uh, I'm not sure whether Julie remembers that or not. Uh, but now we're heading towards our 60 centimeter observatory. This telescope is original. This was put in place in 1968. It's a traditional Cassegrain telescope. It's a big telescope, but it sets beautifully, uh, even though the mechanics of it are well over 50 years old. You can see the big counterweight there in the top right hand side. This is a monster of a telescope, physically speaking, but it's still every clear night is out there chasing down variable stars. So this is the one which almost every observatory team member has cut their research teeth upon uh, up until this point in time. Going forward, I suspect the one meter is going to share those duties, but this is really a wonderful telescope despite its age and despite its size compared to the, the one meter telescope next door. Indeed, I think uh, we can agree that it's, it's, it's actually, um, you know, despite its age, but also maybe even because of its age, it's an extremely reliable mechanical device. And we were actually discussing just the other day, just how good the mechanics on this, uh, this telescope are, um, being able to continue to track all of those lovely variable stars across the sky night after night after night. Absolutely. Quick shout out too to Marshall McCall's instrument. You can see underneath the 60 centimeter telescope there, part of what we call quail. It's uh, basically going to be a mini uh, dragonfly instrument, which will allow Marshall and his uh, graduate students to scan the night skies looking for really faint, tenuous signatures between galaxies which you might think here in Toronto skies is an impossibility, but he's about to prove that wrong in the coming months, or at least we hope that's, that's the plan. So this telescope, not only variable stars, it is the home of a variety of differing activities. But from the student's point of view, this is where they really do learn about astronomy because whenever you go into the telescope at night, something goes wrong and you've got to be able to figure out what the heck's going on. Sometimes it happens in nice weather. Sometimes it happens in January when it's like minus 30 outside and that's in Celsius. Uh, so, you know, it really does put their experience to the test. And I guess these all, all of these tons of telescopes must have somehow been craned in uh, with the original, uh, original construction of the dome. Is that true? That, that is correct. The domes uh, sit four stories in the air. So the domes themselves had to be craned up and into position. And then the two telescopes made originally by a group called Competition Associates had to be craned in. I mean, we are talking about serious weight here. Even the mirror, just the mirror cell by itself, just the mirror weighs somewhere in the vicinity of 50 kilograms. So it's a very big chunk of glass. It's got basically half a ton of uh, aluminum around it to keep it nice and sturdy. And that's just on the, the, the telescope side. That excludes the counterweight, which is comparable in weight. So yeah, this, this is a very, very big, massive telescope, very traditional from the 1960s. Yeah, there's no way you pull that up the stairs with uh, volunteers. This is a craning affair. And in fact, there is a trap door within the 60 centimeter observatory dome, which has a winch associated with it, where we would bring things up and down. There's even a forklift inside here, uh, which gives you an idea of how heavy the instruments were in the 1960s and the 1970s. Things have come a long way. You know, now, as Elena well knows, most of you all now know, we have charge couple devices, CCD cameras that sit on the telescope and literally you can hold them easily in one hand. They weigh only a couple of kilograms. So we've gone from forklifting instruments to uh, you know, just handling instruments very, very simply. Indeed, and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, um, let our crew uh, get back to the, the one meter operations. 
uh, while I go ahead and grab that, uh, grab that screen share back. All right. So now we're back, um, back to the, uh, the regular scheduled, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I suppose regular, regular scheduled events here. Um, and, you know, huge thank you to uh, Connor and Laura for making that all happen live. And uh, Julie, um, did you uh, did you have a story about the birds nesting in the telescope or? Uh... <laughs> I, I saw that come up in chat. Sure, why not? Uh, this is back in probably the late 90s, early 2000s. That's when I was there. Um, the dome was being worked on i think it was during the um automation project mm -hmm. so that the, the you didn't actually have to be in the dome to make the dome go round and the dome would track and we would be able to just set up the the telescope and not spend the whole night in the observatory even though that's a really cool thing to do uh we could go home and sleep and come back and take care of it the next day um but while the the people were in there working on it they had the shutter open and the scope wasn't being used and so a bird got used to spending some time in there and built a nest on the canvas cover and uh, <laughs> laid some eggs and our first night back i climbed up the ladder pulled on the the canvas cover that we put on the the end of the scope and poof, down came the nest <laughs> remember that <laughs> yeah it was a bit of a surprise i think that would be the best way of describing it wouldn't it yes yes I was not expecting nest and eggs to drop next to me that night but, no but you might also remember that we have always had other sort of insectoidal visitors bees of course would often inhabit the observatory in springtime and i'm not sure whether or not julie you were particularly fond of it but many many members of the observatory team would often come down to my office and say you know there are bees flying around in the in the dome uh, well you know open up the shutter i would say and let them out <laughs> Well, you know, on the list of things I was warned about in terms of taking over, I don't think bees was on there. <laughs> oh, it wasn't in the fine print. Sorry about that. All right. So we're going, uh, we've got some really great stuff coming in here. Uh, bees and birds and um, telescopes. Oh, my. Uh, so we also have a wonderful bit of history. So uh, Michael DeRobertis, who's actually uh, hanging out here with us in Zoom, has sent a, a lovely video, which I'm going to go ahead and, and just put through here quickly. And this uh, um, slightly unassociated picture has actually come over from York Archives uh, with the building being constructed constructed um, and that was you know uh, 1968 so a little bit before you got here <laughs> Quite correct. Um, but showing showing the facility being built so we'll go ahead and, and get this going from uh, Michael DeRobertis hello my name is Michael DeRobertis and I'm a close colleague of Paul Delaney's since he arrived on campus in 1986 and in fact even before then as graduate students at the University of Victoria so in the mid eighties, York University had these impressive astronomical facilities built by Dr. Rafe Nichols, supervised at the time by Dr. Stanley Jeffers. And we needed someone to take it to the next level to integrate the observatories essentially uh, into um, course work, course deliveries, and also to build on research and other opportunities. Well, it did not take Paul Delaney who arrived from hosts at uh, Atomic Energy in Manitoba and at two very distinguished observatories in the States at Sunspot, New Mexico, and of course uh, in Tucson, Arizona. Very long to in fact uh, fulfill these uh, expectations by building a very strong educational and public outreach um, ties with uh, local and national and even international media. And of course, to integrate the use of these facilities into our classrooms. Paul has been singled out for his considerable teaching and outreach efforts and skills by being awarded, of course, a university professorship, as well as distinguished national and international awards. Paul is a major reason why the Allen and Carswell Observatory has the largest campus telescope in Canada, contributing both to research and training of the next generation of astronomers in Canada. So a great deal will be said of Paul and his contributions, likely in the last decade, perhaps certainly since the year 2000. But 
a few moments is what life was like in the department upon Paul's arrival. So back in the 80s, the world was radically different, certainly from a technological perspective. When you arrived here, you were given a, a username, a central username by central computing. And Paul at the time had two email addresses, not pdelaney at yorku.ca, but rather fs300176 <laughs> or fs337020 at yorku.ca. Our astronomy group at the time had considerable computing power. We had, in fact, uh, a DACVAX VMS machine, which we named Quasar. And it had, at the, for the first few years, one of the largest hard drives on campus, which was situated in a one cubic meter cabinet and had a storage capacity of, are you ready? 767 megabytes. Lectures were delivered by chalk or acetate overheads. You might not know what the, these are, or at least what acetate overheads are, but that's how the world worked. And there were no cell phones and students actually looked you in the face as you pass them in the halls. Much will be said about Paul Galini's distinguished career, but he has certainly played an important role in raising the profile of astronomy and physics at York University. And I join with everyone else this evening in acknowledging this and thanking him for his many contributions. All the best, Paul. And see, I told you they only said nice things. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous and ever so accurate. I mean, it, times really have changed so much, uh, as Michael has just indicated. I, I, I alluded to the fact that we used to develop up photographic plates. You know, students from our second year class uh, would take their images and go into the dark room. I would show them how to develop up, you know, their, uh, their plates. And you would look at it after about 40 minutes of you know, relative blood, sweat and tears, look at it and go, oh, darn, and, and something had gone wrong. And you would go back out and do it all over again. The days of CCDs and instant gratification uh, in imaging just didn't exist uh, back then. So, yes, uh, we've seen times change dramatically in the observatory uh, and of course, computing power, 760 odd megabytes. Wow, my phone has more than that. <laughs> megabytes are amazing. <laughs> um, and it's uh, we are getting some interesting uh, words in chat as well. Apparently there is also a Sean Delaney who is uh, wishing uh, Michael de Robertis, uh, uh, well, he's saying he looks really good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we have some cross cross greetings uh, going through um, from lots of different uh, lots of different folks, including a um, an HP White saying hello and best wishes. Uh, Former so graduate of, of York. Ah, uh, I guess yep. I imagine there's quite a few of those. And uh, Paula Wilson, who is sending memories of micrographs. <laughs> and I, I am not sure what micrographs are so very well the, the way you would sort of chase down information old information in libraries microfiche and so on wonderful all right so of course we're moving right along on our eclectic journey through time and space um we do have a little game that we've put together to play uh for fun here um so we thought you know we're going to give this a little bit of a try um now some of you may have heard of uh, monikers uh so this is going to be a game called astronomicers <laughs> Just to get us uh, get us going here, thinking of astronomy uh, astronomy quizzes and all that good stuff. So this is a little bit of a, a quiz show for for Paul, but also for anyone else in Zoom or in YouTube who thinks they know what our players are trying to describe. So what is this? Uh, what is this crazy idea? Well, this is a game where we give one of our players a phrase or a word or an object and they have to describe it without using any of the words that make that up or any of its associated words so they've got a um a bunch of uh, a little bit of a challenge so julie uh you are on our list as a uh, so i'm going to call you up first here if you don't mind all right i'm ready um, you've got your video on i do Excellent. So Julie is going to get the first one and I'm going to actually do a little example for everyone who wants to play along. So for example, if I gave 
uh, Julie the secret word or phrase for the space station Muir um, and told her she couldn't use those words or the words Russian orbiting or astronaut, she'd have to come up with a description that said something like, oh, um, thing that used to be above the earth that people could go on. And you all would have to guess that she was talking about the space station Muir. So if you guess this correctly, not only do you win, but she wins too. <laughs> um, so I am going to send her her secret word. Uh, none of us are looking at YouTube, so and if none of us are looking at it, YouTube. We don't know. <laughs> well, I, I am trying to look at YouTube, so if well, you, you can, if you do, if you do catch it, <laughs> uh, Julie, you have your secret word, um, and the three words you're not allowed to use to describe it, in addition to its itself. Uh, all right. Uh, Oh, come on. This is easy. This yeah, is... okay, okay. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Are you ready? Now, now, see if anybody can, everyone who's listening, try to figure out what she is describing. This is the new instrument that is just under two years old. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll let everybody think about that one for a minute, but we've actually already <laughs> given that out in the broadcast so far. So I guess it is on the exam, anything a we say. Abteen has got it in chat. Um, now, who, uh, Paul, you know this one. <laughs> well, I'm guessing that it is the one meter telescope. Yes, uh, that is correct. And so now, uh, Julie, you win. <laughs> so Julie wins, Paul wins, and everybody who got it right totally wins. Um, so the next object is... Oh, maybe a little more challenging. Uh, so Sana, you are also on the list of, um, of game players. Um, so Sana, this is a, maybe a little bit more challenging. So I'm sending it to you now. Um, all right, Sana. Um, oh, and actually I forgot, Julie, you got it right. <laughs> <laughs> this is your winning, this is your winning screen. All right, so back to Sana, um, this is your uh, this is your object. So let's see if Sana can describe this mysterious object. Uh, I don't know. Oh, your audio is cutting out just a little bit. Sending. Hopefully, we can resolve any audio issues. I'm just going to grab Sana here and I'm going to turn off your video to get you better bandwidth. All right. So we've we're I have sent her 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 uh, um, secret object but she is a little bit um lagging on video. So we're actually going to go to the next the next game player. Uh, Matt Are you I'm are here, you here? I'm here, yes. All right. Yes. So you also are going to get a secret term if i can find you in the list all right and awesome can i have an easy one? uh yes i'm sending you one i think i think it's not <laughs> hard but remember you cannot use any of awesome. the words of the object or the three following words so you now have your object and we'll see if if matt can describe uh, this uh, mystery. So go ahead, Matt. Um, all right, object that swallows things. <laughs> that works. Uh, Hawking's radiation. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Oh, we have some guesses. Yeah. We have some guesses. I was going to say the YouTube should be a buzz with that because that's such a topic. <laughs> Julie's got it. Noah, Jesse, who else can catch it? And we do have a few. Uh, Pat's got it. Colin's got it. All right. So you got it. You won. <laughs> so Matt, you've got it. It is, in fact, a black hole. So the key was to get um, people to actually say black hole both words, and you totally did. And um, it's been right. in the media so much the last couple of days with the release of the black hole neutron star merger. So, you know, it's never very far from the public's interest. Hawking radiation was a great hint. And that wasn't <laughs> even anywhere near the words I thought to 
removed from the, li the list. So that was really good. I think you, um, you know, the more people get it, the better your description was. So that's quite good. Uh, although Adam Muzzin is in, in YouTube chat and he has said Pac-Man. So I have to give some extra points just for it being a guess of Pac-Man. Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds like Adam. It really does. That's good. <laughs> All right, we have uh, Sana. You're back. Are you are you back with us? Uh, yes. Zoom froze and just completely crashed and stopped working, so I had to close it and rejoin. Perfect timing. Did you get the hint that you I sent you? No. Or I'm sending it to you again. Okay. Okay. So let me send that over to you. Um, hopefully, it's not the uh, me sending you a text that is causing it to crash for you. Um, so your secret phrase uh, and the words you you cannot use are in included there okay so it's a bright messier object that is frequently shown on winter nights through all of the telescopes because it looks amazing you can see a little bit of color and a few stars i've got my guess <laughs> and you, you okay so you 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 remember you want them to say the first the first uh the first part yeah so it has a it has a messy designation and also a um a more common name that everyone uses haha -ha, that did it <laughs> visible, visible to the naked eye <laughs> all right all right paul go ahead i'm guessing that it's the orion nebula messier object 42 Yes. So the key was to get everyone to say Orion Nebula. And as soon as she said common name, that did it, Sana. You've won, <laughs> as has Colin and Abteen and several other people over on YouTube. Oh, it looks like we have um, Ali Reza uh, has also got it on YouTube. So very good job. Uh, Ralph uh, from, uh, from Rask Toronto Center, M42. <laughs> <laughs> all right so this was all of our brave uh players who chose to uh, give this a try um would anyone else like to uh like to try uh paul i know that um it's probably going to be a bit hard for you to get one of these <laughs> uh okay julie has got a um happy to do another so I'm going to send her a special one, which was orchestrated by uh, uh, um, Bruce Waters, who sent this specifically to Befuddle Paul. Which means uh, it that... probably will. All right. So Julie, <laughs> this is the, uh, the words that you want him to guess and the things you're not allowed to say. And um, there is actually a hint that goes with this one in particular is that um, it's, uh, uh, when, when NASA took, took the excursion away. Um, and uh, go ahead, Julie. So this is a uh, spacecraft that went to uh, our satellite and uh, landed on that satellite um it carried two people okay well that narrows it down to six flights but it... <laughs> <laughs> it's a challenge it's a challenge um, took the excursion away that's the hint that's the hint nasa took the excursion away Okay. Well, I'm, I'm I, sending Julie some supplemental uh, information. All right. I mean, the, I guess I can think of a couple of things that that might reference, uh, but doesn't exactly fill it. As I say, you know, two humans on the moon, there was only six of those missions. Apollo is 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Uh, and so I'm guessing that we're referencing one of those. Um, you're, you're overthinking it, Paul. Oh, I'm overthinking it. Well, that doesn't surprise me too much. <laughs> it is Bruce. I mean, come on. <laughs> All right, do it's, a good, me, it's a good one. It's a good one. Do you want to give me another clue there? Um, even, though, even though the 
um, acronym was shortened, most people still use the full acronym after the excursion was taken away. Go back to your first couple of comments, if you At can. The beginning? Yeah. A, a spacecraft that went to uh, our, our neighboring satellite. Right. It carried a couple of people to land. Ooh, Tom's right, got it. Well, if it took the excursion away, then I'm going to go with Apollo 13 at this point in time. Tom's got it. And somebody um, who is all out of lemons on YouTube has got it. <laughs> <laughs> We have a winner. Um, all right, so so uh, Tom Luton from Rask has got it in the Zoom chat, and we have um, one in a uh, uh, YouTube chat who has it. So we did it. Um, <laughs> he won, Julie. So it is. It is in fact um, the lunar module. Um, it used to be called the lunar excursion module, but uh, it was felt that the taxpayer would see it, that the astronauts were wasting money by having an excursion. Um, so NASA took the excursion out. <laughs> <laughs> and hence why the lemons are all through the YouTube uh, from somebody. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yep. Lem. Yep. Beautifully <laughs> cornered. Beautifully cornered. <laughs> Very. That I. I have to hand it to uh, to Bruce. This was this was a challenging one. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, is there are there any other brave players who would like a second go? Um, otherwise, we will we will move on. <laughs> Um, oh, Probably Jesse, moving. Jesse oh. Rogerson here to give it a shot. All right, Jesse, I'm going to send you a secret one. Um, okay, let's do it. Okay, we nice, got... Jesse. <laughs> this has also been sent by Bruce um, <laughs> to befuddle Paul. <laughs> I'm going to have to speak um, to Bruce. <laughs> he's also sent a, a recording for later. So we'll go ahead and um, uh, Jesse, you have your um, your words that you're not allowed to use. Okay. And um, the hint is that it's got a, uh, a similar name to a sporting event. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. Jesse, uh, give right. it your best go. And remember, don't use any of those words. Right, okay. So... This is a, a, a part of a rocket that was used to get people to the moon. It's a heavy lift rocket. Well, that tends to suggest, okay. Uh, but what was your hint again, um... Elena, I'm just trying to reconcile uh, the hint. The hint was has a similar name to a sporting event, and uh, all of all of the ones Bruce sent in, I, I've added a hint to. <laughs> and I can't remember what I said. I, uh, part of a, a rocket that brought people to the moon. Well, uh, you know, I know the rocket that took us to the moon, part of the uh, rocket, but it's the reconciling with the sporting event that's got me a little... Think, think outside the box on sporting events. Think outside the box on... <laughs> <laughs> well, not, 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 your classic, not your classic sporting events. Yeah. Um... Though very popular. What is what's going on in YouTube? Uh, yeah, hope, hopefully An there's, Andrew there's has lots. guessed cricket. <laughs> <laughs> when well, it's down, Paul, just guess cricket. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I guess I could go with cricket. <laughs> no, I, 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 okay. don't even, I don't even have a decent guess to give you at this point in time. Um, so the the sporting event, I can I can expand on the sporting event. The sporting event um, has to do with things moving at very high speeds as well. Machines moving at high speeds. And so far you haven't used any words that you weren't supposed to. So this is still, so we're still, we're still playing. Um, it's, um, yeah, it's, yeah. Oh, close. <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's okay. It's start. me, not you, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, no we question. have a close. We have a close. Uh, we have a close guess. So I believe June in YouTube has got it. 
Ah, show um, off June. Well done. We're miss missing one part of the answer, but June has gotten very, very close. Um, that, oh, and Pat Hall has got the other half. <laughs> 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 All right, so so we have a Go for it. The answer is Saturn, uh, Saturn V F1. As in Formula One. Formula One. All right. And, Point uh, taken. All right. <laughs> June has guessed F1 and Pat Hall has guessed Saturn V. Yeah. So Saturn V get... <laughs> was, that was why I was trying to reconcile. The Saturn V, of course, was the vehicle which took every single human to the moon and had a flawless record. It never had a failure. But um, I couldn't reconcile that with the sport. But yes, F1, Formula One. Wasn't thinking outside the box enough, Jesse. Yep. All right. Well, that's, that's okay. We'll forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> that's astronomicers for today. I think we we could, as I say, we have a lot of these. Actually, we got a lot of good submissions, but we'll play more of that later uh, if we want to. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, um, switch up a little bit. Now, Julie, you've helped us organize some uh, some lovely collages, which people have sent in from all over uh, York and other places, um, which uh, go through a few different types of things here. Now, I know you found some on uh, YouTube. So why don't you go ahead and um, uh, let's see here. Can you tell us a bit about uh, these pictures that you've chosen? Sure. I mean, a, a presentation of photos of, uh, related to the observatory is not complete without a photo of the observatory. Um, so that's one that I took uh, back in the day, I feel like if I took tried to take the same picture now, I might be standing in a building. Yes, you would. Um, <laughs> so, you know, um, and you can't put together a slideshow of the observatory uh, as someone who was there in the late 90s, early 2000s without the devil box and the blue mini. Um, so the, the blue mini is the picture on the right. And that was taken by Sarah Sadovoy. Um, and that was the control box for the big 60 centimeter telescope. And it was a little finicky to say the <laughs> least. Uh, but finickier still was the devil box over there on the left. And uh, what you don't see in the picture was there a little panel that you would open at the end and had a keypad in there. And you had to program it at the beginning of your observing run because it would you know, calculate the, the the positions of things. And so we had a little calculator that was programmed by someone on, on the computer and we would put in some coordinates and, and get some numbers that we had to plug into this machine. And the keypad would either not enter the number in or enter the number in three times. Um, <laughs> when you it Wonderful. And, and so, you, you know, you would pick a, a time for this to be accurate. And then you do like a countdown and go, okay, go. Um, and then so you were rushing, you know, I've got 60 seconds to get this and it's only six numbers, but I've got 60 seconds to get, damn, I got to start it. Okay, got to go again. Um, yes, so uh, uh, many, many uh, observatory stuff. Uh, we're happy to see that go. And we'll go ahead and just keep going here. We have a few more Hi. submissions. So Yep. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll just go through the rest of these um, and the call out to uh, Sarah Sadovoy, who's not in them, but did submit those pictures from before. Um, so you have a series of pictures here. It looks like from uh, Mario, from Paul, from Sarah and from May. Yep. Um, and uh, some pictures of the installation and from uh, a transit of Venus uh, circa 2004, I believe. That's correct. Yes. Early in the morning. That was a 6.30 a.m. sunrise event. Yeah. And that was down here at the bottom? That's right. On the far left-hand side, the 40 centimeter was less than five years old at that point. It saw first line in December of 1999. And of course, the transit of Venus, they come in pairs, 2004 and 2012. We were lucky to see them both at York. This one, this image was early in the morning. There were about, I don't know, 30 to 40 of us in the 40 centimeter dome, looking due east, watching the sunrise and Venus cross the uh, disk of the sun. Wonderful, and it looks like um, uh, Sarah, who is in uh, in the Zoom chat now, you were there. Um, would you would you like to say hi? 
Sure. Hi. Yes, I was I was also there and it was really exciting. Um, I actually saw both over there, which is I think you were still a co-op student with us at that point, weren't you, Sarah? I was. Yes. <laughs> Start of a long and fruitful relationship. Definitely, yeah. I was gonna say more to it in the next in the next pictures and share share a little story there too. All right. So I believe these are your next pictures. Yeah, they are. Um, so the one on the top left corner is back in the days where I was a co-op student. And something that always stands out in my mind is when I, when I started as a co-op student, the first day that I went to do an interview with Paul so that, you know, I could work there officially, um, Paul was like, call me Paul. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, Professor Delaney? He's like, no, no, call me Paul. I'm like, Dr. Delaney, Mr. Delaney, like, come on, I can't just call you Paul. And he was like, no, you're, you're my colleague now. And as like a 16, 17 year old, I was so baffled. Like here's like Paul, this amazing professor who like works the observatory and like I'm his colleague and just like the trust and the faith that he put into all of us. And like in all of these pictures, you know, to give us the key to the observatory and let us just work there without supervision. Like the amount of trust that he put in all of us really, really made us who we are in a sense. And, um, oh my God, I said I was gonna do this without crying. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but really you gave us a sense of belonging, especially for me to every time I walk through those blue observatory doors and stepped on the platform. You earned it from day one, Sarah. You earned it all the way through your masters, your PhD. Every step you've taken has been you. I just happened to be along for the ride and was happy yes. to be there. <laughs> <laughs> and you've done that for so many of us. And I think that's like the truth. That's not something that you read in um, tenure applications and things like that. You know, I thought it was normal for a professor to put that amount of hours and time and energy and it really is not it's really rare and your love of astronomy and outreach is just infectious the friends you've given us the home you've given us the skills you've given us the support throughout the years um has been just amazing thank you very much indeed there's nothing i can say except thank you thank you thank you Indeed, and we get lots and lots of here here's from uh, from YouTube and uh, over on over on chat as well. Um, and we'll just say this is uh, so this is looks like we're on. Um, we have some pictures from uh, Sarah, but also uh, Sandy, who was in um, I believe one or two of these pictures, um, and Jesse Rogerson, who's also here today in uh, inside the Zoom with us. <laughs> Um, uh, the, the so, photograph on the lower right, Jesse and George's office, I, right office, right? Yeah, can I jump in there and say? Yep, that, I yeah. think that's a great place. Right. Um, okay, so there we go. Um, yeah, that's a picture of me. That's that's me on the right, and then there's uh, George over top, and Jen, and then uh, Paul, of course, right in the middle. And this this apparently was a selfie you took, Paul. Um, yeah, probably about my first selfie as well. <laughs> Because we were trying to get you set up on Twitter because I was so enamored with Twitter and I thought it was the greatest thing and I thought that you should get involved on it. Um, so this is this is the office. This is the office I spent so many years in um, doing um, grad work and doing um, TA work and doing just, you know, everything. And uh, I remember I remember. So when I was an undergrad at McMaster University, I was looking around like, what am I going to do with my life? Where do I go and what do I do? And. I was like, well, I, th I really do want to keep doing astronomy. I really like it, um, but I don't know where to go. And so I was like sort of Googling universities and like trying to figure out. And I found two things. I found Pat. Um, I found the research that Pat was doing. And I thought that was really interesting. But then I also found that there was an observatory there and, and like a rather active observatory. And I, and I was in my application to, to York. I wrote in my application that I want to use the observatory. I want to be a part of the observatory. I can't believe that there's observatory there. I, I want to be a part of this. And I thought this was like, cause it's like this big building, big telescopes, all this stuff is, it felt really big and official. It is big and official. And, and that's what I wanted to do. And I got so lucky that I got to, to join York. And then I remember it was like the first 
semester, second semester, we had to do the research project. And um, I, I don't know if Pat suggested it or if I suggested it or if someone said it, um, that I could do my research project with you. And I was like, what? I can work with the observatory like right away. And, and I dove right in. We, I think we sat down for like a half an hour and you're like, well, I have a project for you. I need my dome to move with, I need my dome to sync up with my telescope. And I was like, I don't know if I could do that <laughs> in my head. This is what I'm saying. I'm like, I don't know if I can program an observatory. I don't know how that works. And, but I was like, yep, I can figure that out. I'm sure I can figure that out. And so, I was going to say, that's what I heard you say. I didn't hear you say the former. <laughs> but exactly what Sarah just said, I cannot echo enough. You were like, okay, great. Um, here's the, here's this, here's the computer. Um, there is the, the, the thing over there. There's the door. Um, here's the keys. Okay. See you later. And I was like, what? We like, how does, okay. I guess I'll, I guess I know how to do this now. It obviously you gave us a lot more you gave us training and you were there every step of the way and you were there at every phone call that we needed you. Uh, but the trust and the, and the education, I don't know, it really somehow you just let us do it and, and we did it. And I'm, I'll end my, my little run here because I have a, a little bit of words here from another uh, friend of ours, um, Harrison Roos, who heard your um, stepping down and he, has, he just has a short brief statement to make. So I'll just read it straight from him. He says, Paul, Thank you for welcoming me into the York family, even though I was a bit of an outsider. You are very thoughtful and generous with your wisdom and knowledge, wishing you the very best in your next adventure. I hope it's stellar. I really do hope the same thing, Paul. It was absolutely amazing um, to work with you and um, all the best. Thanks, Jesse. And we will continue to work together. <laughs> of course. Of course we will. Yes, indeed. And we have a, a whole bunch of great pictures here as well. I just like to call out, um, we, we, uh, we did have picture submissions as well. Um, this is uh, from the uh, York Faculty of Science remembering the Apollo mission, uh, which you, you did live online. And we also have a nice collage here. Um, Ray uh, Bilecki, which I hope I'm saying his name right. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Correct. From the uh, astronauts. He, he was in the, so he's Ast one of these, one in the blue. <laughs> uh, he is in, oh, where is Ray? Uh, he, he's actually I, not in any of the I was going to say, he's not He there. was the one taking them. Yeah, that's right. So do you still have this astronaut outfit, the orange one? No, that was his. Uh, whenever we went uh, on location, this was uh, the, the lower left uh, image was associated with a what's up in space, which was a, uh, a program that he ran every year for, I don't know, five, maybe six years, uh, all associated with bringing children from elementary school into early high school into STEM type activities. The Astro Nuts was a group like, you know, the Scouts that he formed and he would bring to his home uh, and bring speakers in and so on and so forth, doing things associated with astronomy and space science. Uh, it, it was just a, an amazing dynamo of energy. And in the lower left there, you can see Julie, you can see Jen, and you can see Ryan, Astronomy in Action himself. We were always very happy to be associated with him. Jesse, you were there on a couple of those What's Up doing demonstrations. Oh, yeah, he was just, a, he's continually continuing a ball of energy. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and then the image on the lower right is um, a science rendezvous out at uh, the Markham Town Square, which York would go out to every year and build comets, dry ice comets, have crater demonstrations uh, with, with sort of sand and flour. Uh, Jen and Atifa used to do uh, astronomy tattoos with, what's that stuff, henna? Uh, yeah, it was just, just a blast with literally hundreds and hundreds of people wandering around all of the York science exhibits, but always spending a significant amount of time with the observatory team. And that's the group that you can see there in the lower right. I feel like we should mention that we're speaking of Ray in the past because he moved, not because he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> good, good He catch. moved to Calgary. I think he's still doing astronauts, but there I actually just learned this week that uh, his son, Brett, who was seven when they started the astronauts, has just gotten into uh, U Saskatchewan for uh, electrical engineering. So there you go. There you go. Wonderful Fun bit time. of history. All right. Those so space we also... suits were just the best. You'd show up and you'd be like, here's your spacesuit. And you know, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> 
yeah, more spacesuits for everybody. And hopefully we uh, get some of the restrictions lifted. We can start doing some more in-person events. Now we have a bunch of these going through. So I'm just going to try to move through them a little bit, uh, a little bit quickly. Um, so we'll skip through over to the last set of these on, um, uh, this looks like we had uh, Ted, uh, Ted Verdick and yep. May Shari yep. submitted yep. these. That's right. We've got folks in the uh, observatory. That's in the lower left-hand corner. Uh, we've got um, Very Hall. That was probably the Star Symposium in 2011 in the middle. The one on the right, I'm not quite sure where that one was taken. That would have been, maybe that was Starfest, actually. Uh, At the bottom, which, yeah. That's yeah, Starfest. so the, the, uh, shout out to Bruce Waters. <laughs> uh, yeah, and the MYAA. <laughs> Uh, and then the uh, top two images, the one on the top left is in the Petrie building. So that was probably my birthday celebration because they threw a surprise birthday party. I'm not quite sure where the one on the right is. Um, I, really, I, I, it I looks think, like someone's house. <laughs> yeah, I think it was in one of the gatherings at Sandy's place. Um, this was just, uh, the, the, the idea of this slide was that working at the observatory under your leadership has brought so many people together. Um, if we think back to the slide where there was the photo of Jesse and the photos of, of Sarah, the photo in the middle, that group has, is scattered around the world now. Um, and we still regularly get together over Zoom and, and, you know, reminisce and play games. So, and this is, you know, 15, 20 years after we've left. So uh, the observatory and Paul have have uh, left a, a marked impression on us um, and, and has been, you know, the root of uh, long lasting friendships. Absolutely. And since you mentioned uh, Bruce Waters, I think this is a great time to uh, segue um, away from uh, that section and over to a special greeting actually from Bruce, in addition to sending some some good riddles before. Um, so we're actually going to just uh, uh, see what he has to say for himself here. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Bruce Waters, and I'm the founder of the Killarney Provincial Park Observatory. I've been fortunate enough to have known Paul for over 30 years. When I first met Paul at the McLaughlin Planetarium, I remember the extremely high regard the planetarium staff had for him. He's one of the best out there and a true friend to astronomy education, they would say. I once heard that the best educators don't rhyme off mindless facts and boring calculations, but inspire their students with a sense of awe and wonder. 30 plus years later, and I see that you're still doing that, and I cannot imagine how many countless students of yours have gone on to teach others and thus better our culture and knowledge of the heavens above. Paul, I wish you nothing but an incredible retirement, and thank you for all the amazing work you have done. I'll have to forgive him for the astronomica that uh, stumped me. <laughs> yeah, see, I tell you only nice things. Um, and we actually have a, an extra greeting coming in uh, for, uh, especially for you, um, from Sean Delaney, um, who's got some email. He says, apparently you have some email in us from family in Australia who cannot post on YouTube. And they're saying this on their behalf. Uh, Paul, you have cousins watching from Australia. Love, Janet and Peter. <laughs> well there you go of course it's early morning there it's a respectable time of the day but yes a big shout out to the australian contingent who were made aware of the uh, the 4d event tonight on youtube and just as a celebration of that i'm going to put together a little compilation made earlier um, from from julie's pictures um the astronomy tie for all occasions have 23 of them uh, I tried very hard not to wear the same tie twice during a semester. And if I only was lecturing for 24 occasions, then it was always a possibility. But yeah, <laughs> lots and lots of ties. I'm an easy person to buy a Christmas present for. Uh, well, that it does always make it easier, I suppose. Um, now, moving on, uh, we also have, uh, since we're doing a few greetings here, um, just a quick word from, from Adam Muzzin, who's also at York, and I uh, just wanted to add a few things to the greetings people have, uh, have already said. So I'm just going to play this one uh, as well. Just want to say a big thank you to uh, Paul for everything he's done for the Department of Physics and Astronomy over the years. 
and also for all the mentorship he's provided for me uh, in my time at York University. Uh, your real class act, Paul, the uh, undergraduate program in astronomy is really thriving. The observatory is in uh, great shape and we do all sorts of exciting things and that's really um, thanks to you. And also, um, you know, thank you just for the mentorship you provided for me for my, uh, the time we've uh, overlapped here. Uh, your incredibly positive attitude and smile every day and help getting things done. Um, it's just wonderful to, to be around and we'll really miss having you around. But that said, um, you've done such amazing work and had such an amazing career. You really deserve your retirement. So I hope that you uh, enjoy it. And I hope that you come back uh, and visit us from time to time. It would be really nice to catch up. So uh, thank you for everything, Paul, and uh, enjoy your retirement. Tip of the hat and, to Adam. Thank you very much. Yeah, and you know, is uh, most you know, as you uh, as you may notice, there's there's a little bit of a trend here happening um, <laughs> <laughs> with the video greetings. Now we also have a a really um, interesting video from uh, uh, Marshall McCall. Now I'm not sure if we still have him in the Zoom safely. Um, I think we might. Uh, Marshall, I'm still here. Are you here? Shall I play your video? You want to give an intro to your video? Uh, I'll just say um, I started at York about two years after Paul. I actually first met him just before I came to York around 1985 or 86 when I was observing at McGraw Hill Observatory. Yes. He was hunched yes. over a computer terminal. Unfortunately, I have no photographic evidence of that. Otherwise, I would have presented <laughs> it. Anyway, I've been a colleague from with of, of uh, Paul's in astronomy since the very beginning. And furthermore, I attempted to be his chair for about a third of the time he was here. So here's, uh, <laughs> here's my send off for you. Uh, just take it away. Greetings. All right, so this is the uh, the recorded video. Um, I have to say, I, I uh, just a great thank you to Marshall for sending this and also for the really cool cat picture that is in here. <laughs> and salutations, Paul. On this special day, I thought I would reminisce about what you've done and have not done as observatory director in our 30 some years together at York. If you don't like it, blame the incoming director for inviting me. You've certainly transformed our observatory into a powerhouse of education and outreach, and even a tool for research, even bunking at York many a time along the way. In so doing, you made it possible for people like me to implement practical experiences with observing into our courses. I just can't thank you enough for your willingness to sacrifice your time to help your fellow faculty members with observatory issues, no matter what else was on your plate. You were an example for us all. You've become a megaphone for York astronomy on a national stage. You've touched thousands of lives through your teaching of astronomy. And amazingly, you were even receptive to my proposal for new teaching assignments. You've enriched and mentored a long line of student staff by opening up opportunities for engagement in observatory activities. And you have even offered refuge to a litany of celestially named cats. Stupendous accomplishments, but you failed on one important front. Have you heard of the concept known as the warm room? A place where astronomers can go to carry out their observations in comfort. What we have is a cold room. You have left a legacy of suffering. Now this would normally be grounds to wish you good riddance, but I owe you too many favors. So count this as one. Hmm. I guess I should also mention that it's been a privilege to have you as a colleague and as a friend. As you embark on your new cosmic path, I can only say, may the forces be with you. Well said, Marshall, and I apologize about the warm room not being up to spec. It's hard in that room to keep heat in, as Elena will testify as well. <laughs> Indeed, I, I think we'll be uh, we'll be taking on that challenge uh, moving forward. <laughs> Invite Marshall back to the sauna once you get it going. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll have everyone in for drinks. Um. <laughs> uh, absolutely, but he, he's it, absolutely right as far as you know the activity upstairs. You know we do so much these days, and we are able to do it not just because of me, but because of all of the wonderful people that you've heard from tonight. The faculty and particularly the students have always given me that leeway 
to charge forward. And the students acted like, you know, Paul Delaney clones once they got into the swing of it. So it was easy to be in multiple places at once because the students were in multiple places at once. Indeed. And uh, yes, there's was a very, uh, very lovely uh, cat in the background from Marshall as well. So I just give a little shout out to everyone on YouTube who is currently, most of them are, are talking about the cat. <laughs> so good, <laughs> good distraction. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, now we also have a uh, um, an extra special greeting um, sent over actually from Dr. Alan I. Carswell, who you may remember from the Alan I. Carswell Observatory. <laughs> Alan and I go back a long way to when we were you know, colleagues in the department uh, before he charged off to Optech uh, and you know, created the LiDAR empire uh, and so on. And then, of course, you know, because of that connectivity back to the department, he was always uh, you know, keeping up with what the observatory was up to. And then, of course, that wonderfully generous gesture in 19, 19, 2017 uh, to contribute money to York to allow us to buy the one meter telescope and then to do something even more special to create the chair, the Alan I. Carswell chair for the public understanding of astronomy. I mean, the generosity of Alan is, is beyond words and I've been more than delighted to participate in making some of his hopes and dreams come true. Indeed, and I'll just give a little um, a little reading here of his uh, official greeting. So he's he sent this himself um, in a in an email uh, just a few days ago. But uh, this is this is from Dr. Alan I. Carswell. Uh, Paul will be greatly missed from his creative role as observatory coordinator at York University. As a researcher, Paul has for many years been improving our understanding of stellar evolution. However, his main love at the observatory has always focused on promoting interest in astronomy and the use of the telescope at the university, in addition to the more academic uses for research and education. Paul has always placed a high priority on public outreach. This has included small group tours and wide use of public online viewing using the special observatory facilities, particularly during the recent COVID-19 pandemic. Students know that he is always available to answer questions and to respond if there's a problem in the observatory. He is widely recognized as the astronomy expert in the area and is regularly called upon by the media for interviews regarding current topics in space and astronomy. Paul has always been a special colleague and I wish him well in the future. So I hope I did the reading right. <laughs> Sounded great to me, absolutely. And it, it's wonderful that Alan is still associated with the department and the observatory. Oh, absolutely. He's a, a wonderful, one, uh, wonderful person for to keep in touch with. And uh, we have a few more things on our schedule tonight, so we better keep going. Now, one thing I am wondering is um, uh, Pat Hall. Do we have a Pat Hall in the Zoom? Yes, we do. And uh, I, shall I just dive right in? I, I think this is a perfect opportunity. Um, so welcome. <laughs> Welcome, Pat. Uh, maybe uh, uh, just uh, um, feel free to, uh, to go right ahead here. Yes. So I don't have photos of Paul, I looked, but as the new chair of the department, I have access to the department chair's email account going back over 16 years. So some email blasts from the past. March 24th, 2005. We may be facing a catastrophic hardware failure on the 60 centimeter telescope a bearing fail on the east-west drive. This scope is circa 1968 and built to withstand a nuclear detonation. But currently you just about need ear protection in the dome when we are moving the telescope east or west. Two weeks later, a significant quantity of very expensive lithium grease has been deposited into the RA bearings of the 60 centimeter telescope. As a consequence, you can now sleep in the dome while the telescope slews in RA. Very sweet. <laughs> and three years after that, May 24th, 2008, dear Dean Tricconi, as you are probably aware, I am about to undergo a triple bypass heart operation. This is quite a surprise and somewhat unexpected, but nonetheless is imminent. We'll keep you posted. Here's for now, Paul Delaney. Over a decade later, the 60 centimeter and Paul are still going strong. But the rumor that Paul's operation involved a significant quantity of very expensive lithium grease has never been substantiated. In any case, Paul, 
Here's hoping that your retirement goes smoothly. Thanks for everything you've done for York. Ah, uh, dear, I obviously should be very careful about the emails I send to my chair. <laughs> and I remember those emails too. And the noise was deafening. It really was. <laughs> It just goes to show, I suppose, you can never have too much lithium grease. Well, that's very true. No question about that. We came, some, we came across some the other day. <laughs> Indeed. I, was, <laughs> I couldn't help but remember the, uh, the condition of the lithium grease being really good. So this is a good sign for the future yeah. and for all involved. Now, we have a, um, a special little call out here as well. Um, our, one of our observatory members, Noah, has been collecting a few, uh, a few, a few of the many greetings that have come in. Um, so Noah, I think we have just enough time Time if you can do a, a quick read through on your um, your recent well wishes. Absolutely. Thank you, Professor Hyde. Uh, so yeah, so I just want to share with Professor Delaney um, some of the well wishes, congratulations, and thanks that we've been seeing, um, including many, many comments in the YouTube chat here, as you can probably tell, many messages of thanks, congrats, how much everyone will miss you, and how your legacy will live on at the observatory. Um, there's actually a great one that I saw early on from Professor Muzzin that says, Paul Delaney is the GOAT, the greatest of all time. Um, <laughs> we also saw a message a couple days ago from the York U Science Instagram account. Uh, the one on the top left of the screen, which reads, Professor Paul Delaney, director of York Observatory in the face of astronomy at York is retiring. Congratulations, Paul. Thank you for all you've done for the Faculty of Science, York University and astronomy lovers everywhere. Delaney began his career at York in 1986. Over the past three decades, he became the public face of astronomy at York, teaching undergraduate and graduate students and helping spread a love for astronomy to the public, including thousands of elementary students. Professor Delaney exemplifies the values we stand for, service excellence, a student first mindset and dedication to our community, both within and beyond York's walls, says Faculty of Science, Dean Rui Wang. It is hard to quantify what his work has meant to our faculty and to York University. His legacy of stars will continue to be felt at York for many years to come. Professor Delaney, you have truly, truly left an enormous legacy. You've made such a huge impact on all of our experiences um, on our love for astronomy. And as you can see throughout the slide, so many people agree. Uh, and it's truly a testament to who you are as a person, a professor, um, as a testament to all the awe that you've inspired. Um, this is an article that the York U Science Instagram account linked. That's actually on the slide here if anybody wants to check it out. Uh, and there was one paragraph that really stood out to me that I feel really encapsulates pretty much everything we've experienced, everything your students, the public, um, us at the observatory, everything we believe for your personable and friendly demeanor, for your ability to make all of us feel so welcome. Um, and it says, Delaney is beloved by students for his boundless enthusiasm, ability to communicate complex information in an engaging manner, kindness, and sense of humor. In the words of a former student, some people are born to teach and Paul hits the bullseye. Uh, so from all of us, thank you so much for everything, for your dedication and your passion for astronomy and for sharing it with all of us. We want to wish you a huge congratulations um, on your retirement and all the best in the future. I know that I speak on behalf of all of us at the observatory, uh, work study students and volunteers alike, that it's been an absolute honor to work with you. Uh, Sarah said it perfectly early on, you really gave us a second home at the observatory. You've challenged us, given us responsibility and, and we've all had such a blast. We are so, so lucky to have worked with you. Um, so yeah, so thank you so much. Um, and then I can pass it back to you, Professor Hyde. Thank you, Noah. Wonderful, uh, terrific uh, pulling of you know, the various bits and pieces together. And I will reiterate, it was my pleasure to work with you and all of your student colleagues, past and present. Excellent. And, you know, it's, uh, it, is, it is a great, great, great fun to work with so many great people. Um, and I thought, you know, what would be fun as well is to, uh, um, towards the end of the show, we're, we're you know, running into, um, you know, well, we should probably think about doing just a few more of these, but there's one thing that, that nobody has mentioned yet, but it was sent in by a note um, by James uh, Laframboise, which I yes. hope I'm saying that right, um, who is pointing out the, um, the amount of telescope help that you give people. So in 1987, when Paul had been at York for about a year, um, and this is uh, James saying, <laughs> Kathy said to me, <laughs> but for our 25th wedding 
anniversary, I want to buy you a really good telescope, but I want you to pick it out. So Paul, you told him what to buy and where to buy it. And they have since then have 34 years of astronomical bliss. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is a, you know, picking out a good telescope is um, quite, the, quite the skill. And it is something that I know you have been involved with many, many, many times helping people to get scopes and get access to scopes. It's, uh, it's one of those fun things to be able to make sure that people get the right optical aid depending upon what it is that they want to do with their observing and, of course, you know, what their financial uh, situation is. Jim was uh, really, really interested in doing terrific, you know, generic types of observing, and we got him a Mi 20 centimeter. It was one of the schmidt cass grain telescopes, and he would always pack it up absolutely, you know, uh, yeah fastidiously i mean you know he would go out observe pack it up he would buy cars that would only have trunk space that would fit his telescope he wouldn't buy a car if it didn't fit the telescope and and he does that to this day so he is a, a very very considerate observer he would come out with us to albion hills with the astronomy class 1740 natural science class love to observe in my backyard out in the simcoe uh, where it was relatively dark compared to his guys in Thornhill. Yeah, it was a real pleasure helping him find his telescopic dream. Indeed, and it's uh, the telescopes are always fun, so I couldn't help, help myself. I put in one extra little riddle here at the end for the observatory, um, and then it's only like a little bit of a pun, but can you guess the observatory riddle? Why is the observatory such an inspirational place? And I'll ask anyone on YouTube as well if they can guess it. <laughs> Why is the observatory such an inspirational place? <laughs> Don't know the answer to the riddle. <laughs> well, it's it technically it's because everything's always looking up. Uh, but Julie actually had a better answer. She says, it's because of you, Paul. (laughs) (laughs) Very good. All right. So we have a wonderful uh, thing to pass to now. Um, So observatory riddles aside and um, uh, all fun and games, we actually have a a really great uh, connection here. So we have from Rask Toronto Centre, Ralph uh, Ralph Chu and Tom Luton, who have joined us tonight in Zoom in YouTube. And uh, Ralph, are you here? Can you uh, turn on your video? Yes, uh, I have turned it on. I hope it's running. You look great. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, well, it's, it's great to be part of this evening's celebration. And uh, I just want to read some thoughts on uh, Paul's retirement uh, for this evening. For nearly 10 years, Paul has made a long trek via the TTC from his office <laughs> at York University to the Ontario Science Centre to host our Speakers' Night programs. Uh, These talks presented monthly between September and May have always been well received. As our second vice president for programs, uh, Paul has provided valuable advice to our council meetings and is always ready to help. In recent years, he has kindly hosted some of our council meetings at the Petrie Science Building. A member of the RASC since 1980, he has made many friends among our members. Tonight we celebrate his well-earned retirement from York University. As the Toronto Centre of the RESC's immediate past president, it is my very pleasant uh, duty to present the RESC Service Award Medal to Paul in recognition of his many years of service to the Toronto Centre, the RESC as a whole, and astronomy in Canada. This following is the citation that was submitted with his nomination for the service award last December. Paul Delaney is the face of astronomy to the Canadian public. Since joining York University's Department of Physics and Astronomy in 1986, he has become a frequent television and radio commentator on astronomical events. Now a university professor and director of the Alan I. Carswell Astronomical Observatory, Paul is a dedicated, enthusiastic astronomy educator. 
He has been a member of the RESC since 1980 and served as Toronto Center's Vice President for Programs from 2009 to 2020. As Vice President, Paul arranged a series of speaker night presentations given mostly by astronomy, uh, astronomical faculty and graduate students at York University and the York University uh, and the University of Toronto, covering a wide range of topics, including black holes, LIGO observations, and Canadian uh, contributions to astronomy and space technology. On the rare occasions when a speaker had to cancel unexpectedly, Paul was always ready to step in with a talk on a recent astronomical finding. At the beginning of the pandemic emergency, he helped to make the switch to online presentations seamless for our members. As a member of our council, Paul Delaney has arranged for meeting space at York University and encouraged mutual support of astronomy, education, and outreach activities. He anchored the 150th anniversary RASC National Star Party in January 2018 and has served as a member of the National Council. Paul is the recipient of the 2010 Sanford Med Fleming Medal of the Royal Canadian Institute, the 2015 Keelak Award of the Canadian Astronomical Society, and the 2017 Club Kid Roberts Award of the Astronomical Society of the Pacific in recognition of his work in astronomical outreach. Paul Delaney will retire in June 2021. He has already recruited and coached his successor at York University and the Toronto Centre and looks forward to continuing his astronomical outreach activities at sea once the pandemic is over. Toronto Centre is proud to nominate Professor Paul Delaney for the Service Award in recognition of his many contributions to both the Toronto Centre and the Society. Paul, I'll be uh, sending the medal to you very, very soon. On behalf of the members of the Toronto Centre, thank you for all you've done to raise the profile of astronomy. And we wish you a long and happy retirement and hope you'll think of us every once in a while as you're cruising the seas as a ship's astronomer. Uh, so thank you again, my friend. Clear thank, you. thank you very much, Ralph. It was a wonderful period of time working with the uh, Toronto Centre. Uh, I think it's three or four centres over the 40 years that I've been in Canada, but none closer than working at uh, the Toronto Centre and helping arrange a couple of the GAs that uh, we hosted at York. Wonderful ride, terrific relationship between the RASC and York University. Yes, thank you, Paul. And we're, we're going to miss you, but don't be a stranger. <laughs> You know, I'll and, think of you. Rest the yep. <laughs> <laughs> And we'll see you whenever you come back into home port. Wonderful. Now, I uh, just a quick little call out here. We do also have uh, Tom Luton. Are you uh, are you here tonight as well? Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, I am here. It's, you'll just have to uh, start the video because you've got me locked out. Oh, I see. I see. Let's just go ahead and put that request in you should be all right um are you, you are yep. we can see you. wonderful you're wonderful. on <laughs> all right well um so hello everyone my name's tom luton i am the president of the toronto center of the royal astronomical society of canada and first of all i've been asked to relay best wishes by the royal canadian institute uh, as Ralph mentioned, uh, Paul is one of an elite group of Canadian science communicators, has been recognized by the RCI's Fleming Medal, and he has always attended Fleming Medal presentations as well as RCI uh, RASC joint talks. Now, Ralph has spoken at length of Paul's achievements and awards, but one thing that I want to give Paul credit and praise for is something that at first is going to sound a lot less glamorous and a lot more mundane but it's something that I feel was vital in keeping the Toronto Centre alive during a dark time. And I'm not talking about our recent COVID pandemic. So uh, since the closure of the McLaughlin Planetarium in the mid nineties, RASC Toronto Centre has made its home at the Ontario Science Centre. Um, the long and the short of it is that they gave us a free place to meet and we have our meetings open to the public and we help out them with just about all of the space and astronomy related events at the Science Centre. In 2015, there was a change of policy at the Science Center, and they decided that the agreement was no longer that beneficial to them, and so we, um, we were made homeless. 
Now, finding meeting space for 100 people for cheap in Toronto is not easy. There are a lot of groups out there looking for meeting space. Luckily for us, we had Paul Delaney. Uh, the city of Toronto had meeting spots available across the city for groups to book, but to prevent hoarding those spots, they were only made available a short time before the date in question. I believe something on the order of two weeks. And the good spots went very fast. And so... Paul Delaney was responsible and handled it beautifully. He would repeatedly log into the City of Toronto website seconds after the booking slots were made available so we could actually get those great locations. And he pulled it off. Uh, our 2015 annual meeting was held in the formal, former council chambers of old North York City Hall. You can't get much classier than that. Uh, we sometimes call it our year in the wilderness because um, about a year later, the Science Center changed their minds and we came back. Um, but during that year, we never missed a meeting due to a lack of location, uh, a feat that kept the Toronto Center in good shape during a time when we really could have suffered greatly. And it was all thanks to Paul. So Paul, on behalf of the Toronto Center, I'd like to say thank you for all you've done. Good luck wherever you find yourself in the future. And most of all, good on you, mate. Thank you, Tom. And yes, that was a challenging year, that is for sure. Uh, that whole process of finding meeting space kept me very, very preoccupied. It was well worth the effort. No question in the world about that. But I'm glad it was only one year long. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks to uh, Tom and Ralph and everyone from RASC for, uh, for coming along today to our special broadcast. Now, we're just rounding off a little bit of our, our final things. Now, um, uh, the observatory also has a small presentation, but uh, Sana, I have you down also. Um, there's a few words you wanted to say here. Uh, yes, I just wanted to say thank you so much, Professor Delaney. I I don't think words can express how amazing you are and how much you've done for everyone who's come into the observatory. I think that I, I agree absolutely with everything that everyone has said tonight. Um, you have made, personally, you've made my experience at the observatory and even at York just completely amazing. I think everyone is going to miss you so, so much. I know I will. It won't, York will not be the same without you in your office where we can just go and drop in and bother you whenever we want. Um, but thank you again and congratulations and have an amazing retirement. Thank you very much, Sana. Having everyone in my office, and sometimes it felt like everyone was in my office, was the highlight. You know, it's the students that really, you know, have made the last 35 years fly by. And uh, it was my privilege to work with all of you. Well, thanks to Sana and all of our, our presenters here uh, today. And um, also thanks to everybody over on YouTube who's been uh, who's been joining in. Um, we do have an extra well wishes coming through via Sean Delaney once again from Australia. Um, more from Oz. Congrats, Paul. We are very proud of your achievements and wish you the best. Kim, Daryl, Ben, Mum, and Dad. <laughs> so... <laughs> We have lots and lots of uh, great things coming through um, on all kinds of uh, all kinds of uh, statements. So we'll go ahead and uh, um, finish off here. This is a um, uh, official observatory postcard, <laughs> which is um, basically presenting to Paul um, uh, our, our uh, official Alan I Carswell Observatory Unlimited Access. Uh, postcard, uh, which will be presented to you next Tuesday. <laughs> um, this card is good for unlimited observing and infinite data access at all observatory telescopes and archives. Um, and, you know, here's wishing you all the space to see uh, new things. And of course, with scope to travel and eclipses, uh, wherever you can get them. So this is from all of us at the observatory. And it comes with a uh, congratulatory pack of uh, Tim Tams, because nobody uh, <laughs> <laughs> no Australian should be without them. And I'll go ahead and say, you know, thank you once again to everybody who are for coming. And we actually have a, a special outro planned uh, from our Matt. And I'll go ahead and say one thing about astronomy cats, which we hope to continue. Um, so we will be continuing the tradition of astronomy cats at the observatory, um, as you can see. Just before Matt reaches into the outro, uh, 
I don't have an official postcard to hand over to you, Elena, but uh, a tip of the ceremonial hat as I hand across the keys to the kingdom. Good luck. You will have a wonderful time being the director. I am delighted to give you all of the administrivia that goes along with the observatory. Uh, and yes, that means I'll be able to just freely chat with the students and observe while you pound the pavement. But you will be great and keep up the good work at the observatory. So thank you very much for stepping into my shoes. Absolutely. And uh, we'll go ahead and say, you know, once again, thanks to everybody for coming and uh, we'll, we'll see about getting our uh, videos off and hand over to uh, Matt. Are you still here for the outro? Yes, indeed, I'm here. <laughs> So, all right. Uh, well, everyone, you have been listening to our special event for the Director Delaney Departure Derby at the Alan I. Carswell Observatory. And let me remind you that this broadcast is part of our weekly YouTube series that airs every Wednesday evening here at 7.30 p.m. Easter time. Uh, these and all of our astronomy and astrophysics program are written and presented by the students, faculty, alumni, and friends of York University. The host this evening have been myself, Matt, uh, Jesse, Arfa, Sana, Julie, Lor, Mahin, Noah, Patrick, Ralph Cho, and Tom Luton from Rask, uh, Joshua, Marshall, Michael, Sarah, Amin, Afteen, and many, many more. Uh, moreover, a special thanks to everyone who submitted pictures, video, and material for this episode. And a very special thanks to the star of our show tonight, the one and only York University's legendary Professor Paul Delaney. Uh, wish you the best, Professor. And for everyone on, on YouTube, make sure to leave any comments or questions or anything you would like to say to Professor Delaney in the comment section of the video. And let me remind you as well that all of our programs are free, but if you would like to make a donation or buy you one of our astrophysics uh, or astrophotography, I'm sorry, calendars, which by the way are now 50% off of the university uh, bookstore, you can see our website at observatory.info.yorku.ca. And you can always connect with us on Instagram and Twitter with the handle at York Observatory, as well as on Facebook with the handle Alan I Carswell Ops. And check out our, our website for show notes, content, updates, and contact info at observatory.info.yorku.ca. And well, thanks again for joining us and tuning in. Clear skies and have a great night.